So today was a bit of a trip. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I don't know if you got if if any of the bikers, riders, motorcyclists, or enthusiasts have had this happen, but I came out and my bike was knocked over. And of course I fucking was livid and uh I was super pissed. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> like I was mad. And so I stand the bike up. And I'm checking. Everything's fine. And I'm like, okay. So I can call the cops. Go look at the camera footage and see who did it. And then insurance and all that shit. And I'm going to be dealing with this all day. Or I'm just going to let it stand up. I'm just going to pace around and like just bring it down. <laughs> I've been swinging on people, not going to lie. If there's something in the motorcycle world, if you touch someone's bike, you're getting in a fist fight, period. Like, there's that's one thing you just don't do in the motorcycle world is touch someone's ride. And if you knock someone's bike over, usually the level of violence that's going to get brought to you is pretty fucking high. So I was mad. And uh, I was like, well, okay. So I start the bike up, let it run, and then checking everything nothing's dripping everything's good i'm like okay we'll just go and get breakfast and see and just leave the bike running and see how it is and it was fine and i was like okay so i just went and ended up having the day that uh that you guys see now but you know i don't know if you guys ever had that happen to you i was i was surprised that it happened in superior minnesota like, I, I, I don't know. I was just, I was, I was surprised that it happened. But what's interesting is that, <laughs> so my bike gets knocked over in the morning and I eat shit personally <laughs> yeah. in this good, video. Yeah. Okay. And I just, it was weird, you know, like it was weird that the bike fell over and then I fell over. It's just really weird. I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what that is, but it was weird. Um, but yeah. Uh, I'm not going to share any of that footage because it's not pleasant. <laughs> it's just me fucking, <laughs> there's some guys out smoking cigarettes and they like, they, I, I could feel them look at each other and they just, <laughs> and they just left. <laughs> I was fucking, I was like a bull out of attack somebody. I was mad. I was real mad.
Palisades, and they told me about something else, which is in town. And, uh, yeah. So this is Gooseberry Falls. I hope it's waterfalls. I haven't really seen any waterfalls, so I'd like to. I wear the wrong shoes again. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm gonna go down there and uh, swim in that pool because I'm hot as F. And uh, that's the point, that's why we're here. <clears throat> Neat. Did not bring the GoPro, so there's that. Just imagine me swimming. Splash, 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 splash. <laughs> All right, cool. This is gonna be fun. Let's go. These are the lower falls. It's a stairway. It's pretty good. <laughs> pretty good, yeah. I'm good. <laughs> cool. No, nothing. It's funny because yesterday's video, I talked about falling. Like I literally just talked about that. <laughs> it's weird, there's like a hole. I stepped in it, like I didn't roll my ankle or anything. I just stepped in a hole and I was like, we're going over. So I just literally tucked everything in and just fell over on my back and tucked my chin, which is exactly what you're supposed to do. So literally, I like the little scrape on my knee and that's it. Okay. <laughs> what the fuck? All right, let's go, uh, let's go swimming. Matt, what are you doing today? Oh, it's another ordinary day for me. Oh yeah, what are you doing? Oh, I'm just taking a shower in a waterfall. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, where did you take a shower today? Oh, I took one in a waterfall pool. No big deal. With all the frogs. <laughs> yeah, man. This is what's up. Good fucking day. Look at that slime. Look at it. Look at it. Good shit, my dudes. This place would be crazy if the water was like super duper running. Like, yeah, this would be crazy. Super crazy. I'd come here after a rain for sure. Probably wouldn't swim. But uh, definitely worth checking out. This place is cool. There's three sets of waterfalls. This is the middle one. This is the lower one. No water even running over it. And then the upper one, we'll, uh, we'll drive up to the upper one. Careful, you'll fall and bust your shit like I did. I can honestly just fall asleep right here. I love that sound. So good. The water feels so good. Oh my God. <clears throat> so we're gonna drive about 20 minutes up north, uh, halfway to Palisades Head. 
is a place called Split Rock. And we're gonna go look at Split Rock. We're not gonna go up to the Canadian border. It'd be, you know, almost a 400 mile day and I'm just, I'm not about it right now. I'm very happy just relaxing and chilling and I also wanna go swimming in Lake Superior where it's not 50 degrees. So we're gonna do that instead. Like I was going to say, there's no real good way down there, so I'm not going to swim in that one. But there's this cool bridge, and there's this walkway underneath the bridge, which is kind of neat. This is a nice state park. All these state parks are nice. National parks are nice. Real nice. So pick up your fucking garbage. God. Let's go. There's this, like, whole castle situation. Pretty cool. All right, if you're gonna trail your bike, this is how you do it. If you're gonna trail your bike, that's how you do it. Let's go. All right, so we're gonna drive over that bridge that we walked underneath right now. They got a ton of bike trails up here too, like bicycles. All right, so this is Split Rock Lighthouse, and uh, there was a ton of shipwrecks, and I guess they're, the shipwrecks were so bad that they were like, hey, lighthouse, goes right here. <laughs> so we checked this out, and then I run up north a little bit to Silver, whatever you'll hear in the video, Silver Harbor or something, Silver Bay, Silver Bay, and uh, I see all these little train cars, little ones, and they got like piles of rocks in them. Well, that's Taconite. And I think later tonight, we talked to somebody who works on the railroads and he explains what all that shit is. Pretty cool. Home? Where I am? No, I'm not even that far north. Probably like right here. Neat. Oh, 
Dude, look at those horns. Oh, clouds. Good to know. Huh. I need to learn about that. Oh man, I like this. Uh, this is cool. This is really cool. light station storm dropped 13 degrees below zero winds were 60 miles an hour waves were over 30 feet nine ships were wrecked 11 people died so there's this big huge anchor up front and they salvaged it four ton anchor of it. Broken half. Oh, really? This is the Edmunds Fitzgerald route. Yeah. So the storms... Storms on Lake Michigan are wild and places. Temperamental on its best day. But up here is a totally different animal. Like this Lake Superior is crazy. Like, and it's big. It's bigger than all the other Great Lakes. And it's super powerful. The winds up here are no joke. And the waves during uh, Superstorm Sandy, I was surfing in Holland and there were 20 foot faces breaking. That was an epic day. And uh, yeah, but from here, like, yeah, this lake is flipping nuts. You crazy. All right, let's go look at that anchor. Okay, there's that anchor. Huge, huge anchor. So, the anchor, the Modernia, Madeira, Madeira. This anchor was salvaged from a shipwreck, 5,000 ton barge, tossed up against Gold Point during that big storm. Burr, 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 burr. Working underwater for three weeks, divers removed the four-ton anchor by hacksawing the heavy chain. The anchor was moved by truck to a dive shop. Laborers returned. This is a four-ton anchor. Jesus. All right. Bye for your four-ton anchor. Bye. Miss you. We're going to head over to uh, whatever. Um, something point. Something. Apparently, a bunch of people have died where we're going next. So uh, I'm glad we got our trip and fall out of the way. <laughs> Fuck. So I'll see you guys down the road. Let's go.
by this earlier, and I'm not driving by it again. Let's fucking go swimming, goddammit. Minnesota is about their tunnels, especially in the Duluth area. It's probably like six tunnels when you go through downtown, which is pretty cool. You'll see. If you're good. <clears throat> Bet no one's swimming because this water is probably mid 50s. Yeah, these trails. They run up and down here. It's like bicycle trails. I willfully did not wear the right shoes again. Oh look, no, I'm not doing it. <laughs> What's wrong with me? What have I? Okay, does this camera freak out the moment that it gets wet? Yes. Yes, it does. Oh my god, look how crystal this water is. That means one thing. It's cold. That's it. That's all it means. Oh, fuck. Oh, yeah. It's cold. It's not like... Oh, there's the numbs. Yeah, okay. I was going to say it's not like numbing cold, but it is. Oh yeah, it's numbing cold. Oh, God. Oh. 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 Yeah, Wim Hof, eat your fucking heart out, you asshole. Oh. Mm. The trick is to control your breathing. That's for sure. Take a look. We're not going to stay and um, get a real chill set in. Went for the dip. Perfect. And um, feels good. And I'll do it again in a few miles. And I'm going to wear the right shoes. Thumbs up for wearing the right shoes. All right, this is definitely how I want to experience Lake Superior. That Wisconsin Point, which is where I'm going, is going to be like a, I think a more proper beach. So, you know the drill. You know the drill. Let's get on down the road.
perfect diving, huh? Let's bring for the ring. I was gonna bring you back a present. I'm going to. What is this? Cool. That's a good sign. <laughs> Oh yeah. Wow. <laughs> I brought the shoes. I don't need the shoes. Matt, get your life together, bro. Brought them, don't need them. Okay. <laughs> Well, the verge is in on Wisconsin sand. It's pretty good. <laughs> um, also, you can have fires on this beach, which is pretty cool. So it smells nice over here. All right, there was people in the water and that's a good sign. Oh yeah, so I talked to some people and they said that it's not bad. And they were right. Up north was definitely colder, but this is still chilly. Huh. Okay, we're here. We're swimming. <laughs> Go swimming. <laughs> Jump in. Go swimming already. Go. Yeah, man, there's like two fires down there. That's really awesome. Oh, this is so cool. Oh my God, this is awesome. All right. Note to future Matt, come here and have a fire. Dude, what? Town is right there. Duluth is right around the corner. We were way up there. Like way up there. Okay. No, it's nice. The water's nice. Here, try it out. Go ahead. Try it out. What are you waiting for? You nervous? Do it already. Jump in. Little oh, bitch. I'll help you. I'll push you in. There you go. for a morning swim. The hotel has a pool, but why? 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 Hey, there's a lighthouse. Duluth Lighthouse. That's me. Awesome. All right. Oh. Go do me Ugh. and uh, swim. Enjoy this. I say this every day, every every day. I wish I was here an hour earlier. <laughs> but uh, I'm gonna swim and then eat my 
gas station uh, wrap, and then I'll meet you downtown Duluth. Sound good? Turn on your bell notifications so we know when I'm downtown. Duh. And we'll uh, we'll see what's going on downtown. Till then, get out of here. Um, that's not far enough away. Either. Did it. Did it today. I've been doing it for a month. More than a month now. And we just rolled over uh, 6,000 miles on the bike. Okay, we'll talk about it in a You look a little dry. Why don't you get wet? Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Western Michigan, we just look due west. Here, you have to look down. Which, getting home is going to be easier because we're going to be going downhill. Because that's how this works. <laughs> You're done.
or just to the east downtown. the crazy thing you know we like that okay this place is a little busy that's good That's gonna happen. Wild state cider. That's gonna happen. 
What is this? Oh man, this is awesome. Yes. So it's, so it's like roads, good roads, bad roads, slow yeah. down on yeah. the bad roads? Yeah. It's like uh, you drive 70 on the interstate because it's well maintained, right? <laughs> right. There's not a big, huge pothole, yeah. 8 inches deep. But yeah. you might find that on a 25 mile an hour road because that's acceptable. Right. Yeah. But on those roads, or that, those kind of defects exist, uh, it's more common to be but on the high-speed rail, it's fairly incoming because of frequency of inspection and there's talking. Yeah. Man, uh, tomorrow before I take off, I'm going to go to the train museum here in town. I've never been, right? Yeah. Cool. I, you know, I... They did like a lunch ride up the North Shore. Too. I saw that thing. I saw that today. I heard it's pretty cool. I haven't it's a cool-looking train. It's a really cool-looking train. And I, I rode that ride. And they're... The, the tracks are closer to the, the water than the road yep. is, yep. so I'm sure it's beautiful. But you know, I didn't I didn't realize before this trip. You know, you travel, you learn stuff about yourself. Well, I realize I like trains. I, I'm just I'm fascinated by them. Not like the model trains or anything like that. But when I when I'm on the bike, I'll pass a semi, and I'm only as big as this back two tires, yep. and I'll see a train, and it'll have double stacked semis, hundreds of them. And it's just a scale thing. It's just fascinating to me. And so when I see a train either coming at me or the best is when I'm running next to the one, I'll run out in front of it and then I'll stop and I'll wait for it to catch up and then I'll run out in front of it and I'll wait. Uh, it's so cool. Yeah. I, they're just, they're, they're so cool. And the, I would love to hear an engine fire up. Yeah. So it's a diesel generator. So there's not as lot of oh. modern ones. I believe that this maybe the scenic ride might have like a steam engine that they've reconditioned or something. Really? Would you like a little to go piece Oh no, thank you. Not not for that. Say goodbye to that? Okay. Say goodbye. Um the last two nights I've had a hotel by right by their train tracks. And it must be an area where they're doing a lot of stuff because about every hour or so, one will just chug through. Yep. And it made me sleep like a baby. We have a Taconite, so there's several railroads coming to town. We have a Taconite facility that loads ships. It's a uh, steel balance. Oh! Like 30% iron, 30% steel, I guess I should say, balance. So they have okay. these Taconite facilities in Florence. Uh, otherwise, there's other railroads that come in here. There's timber, Taconite's the big industry, and then other shipping commodities. Huh. We actually have a swingspan bridge on the St. Louis I, River right here. Yeah. I just, we, we cut over a whole circuitry on that uh, in December. This last December, so that was cool. I was up. Uh, when you asked me to come here in winter, I did come here last winter. So I had to upgrade all the, the equipment on that runs that bridge. So, pretty weird. There's a little toilet up in the barns and shit. What? Yeah, so I told all my guys, don't shit this guy's office. Because there's a guy that bridge tender that sits up there. Yeah. So I'm opening up the post guard calls in his bathroom and burns the, burns the shit. It's got a little burner that burns the crap out of the toilet. It's pretty cool. <laughs> a couple of my guys said they used that gas in the hot tool. So someone's off and he's got a little thing up there. Right. So, oh my god. That's an interesting uh, idiosyncrasy. Huh. Idiosyncrasy? Idiosyncrasy. I, I mean, just, I never would have. I thought, you know, a toilet's well, a toilet, you, you, know? you know? And there's no, like, the bridge is isolated. Oh, you know, duh. Right, so, yeah. So, so there's like, no plumbing. Well, so it physically locks in, and then when, it, when we need to open it for a shift on a train, then it unlocks, yeah. and it picks up, and it turns. So he's still in there. Yeah. I mean, so there's, yeah, there's, there's no, no plumbing, way, there's nothing. No, <laughs> I mean, unless you had some really flexy pipe or something. Like <laughs> huh. Now, how long would it take this bridge here? Say a ship comes in and it's set for trains to, to turn and make way. Four minutes, five minutes. Out. Really? Well, that, that, I mean, that's way faster than I thought. When I first started with the company, the guy that was the supervisor here, he's actually a retired guy who wanted to hang out with tomorrow for two days. He had me stand on the end and had the bridge and the bridge. That's cool. Wow, 
that's that's really unique. Yeah, well, they don't run it very often, just to run around, you know what I mean? Right. It's, uh, if it breaks, it's a big problem. Uh, but that was pretty cool. And we've redone some stuff. So you had some guy one time that only unlocked it a certain way to turn it. There is power that comes up under the same place yeah. into that high voltage line. So I guess they just twist it and twist it and twist it. And so we had to redo all the power. Oh my god. It's probably 12 years ago now. Now there's a, you go this way, you go that way, you go this way, you go that way. So you don't have to do that stereo. <laughs> Like a dog just walking around a bench or something, yeah, just tail himself no up. Yeah. <laughs> huh. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Well, as a kid, I went on a trip with my grandparents on the snow train. And it was one of those trains that like had the big shovel on the front and snow would come down and it was one of those trains that like had the big shovels on the front and blasted snow. Yep. It was like a luxury train. It was really, it was old, you know, but it was really cool. That was fun. No, th yeah, this was headed towards Alaska, through okay. Canada, yeah. Yeah, it was like two days or something. Just out and back. Yep. But it was fun. Beautiful. Totally beautiful. Talk about in the middle of nowhere, like, wow. Yeah, I love the I love the sound of the engines. I know. Really? When they were out, it means we're not working. You know, obviously we're not up there, you know, when they're going by. So. I was up in Silver Bay today, and there were. Hundreds of little tiny cars filled with some sort of aggregate. Probably tag it. Yeah, that's what that that's is. A, it's like thirty percent. Which is black like, pellet. Yeah, it looks like cocoa puffs. Yeah. It's about thirty percent. And they mine that up there. That's what they do. This is called this whole you know point of Minnesota looks here is called the iron. Oh. Anybody that has a job up 53 up that way, Silver Bay, all that shit all the way up, unless they're doing something with outdoor, like laundry waters, recreational shit, those people work in the mines. Yeah. Potentially in lumber, but almost everybody up there is a job. So that's the base material for steel, steel. everything. Yep. Huh. That's why the cars are small. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I had no idea. That's why I'm up here. We're upgrading some tachinite lines because we charge by the ton. So we make a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, so a train could move how many tons? So I'm an electrical engineer. Yeah. I just deal with like. Electrical? Traffic, signals, oh, okay. like that. I don't know. Like, I'm sure I should know because I get PowerPoint sent to me all the time. All right. They say each train, like the selling points, like each train is like a thousand fucking semis. It takes two guys to set up a thousand fucking drivers. So all we need to for our own road maintenance versus the semis that go drive on. Fun roads and congest traffic, like how much it, how much weight they can pull around. I've I've seen hundreds of cars double stacked with semis, so you know a lot. <laughs> been a really pleasant conversation and yeah thank you <laughs> see i find your job way more interesting than mine <laughs> no
Now, did you want to get into the rail when you went to school, or no, just sort of like happened? Outside. There's like this engineering and tech expo. And, uh, you know, when you talk to different employers that we're, we're going to hire, them. Like the railroad said 70 percent, the field 30 percent. Another offer from Wanza Construction for like a project manager of wind, wind turbine sites and shit. Whoa. I have a brush made again many years later for solar, so now they're into that. But uh, I just like being outside. I, I had a cubicle job before, and I work in clean rooms and shit, and I don't want to fucking just be under fluorescent lights all day, not seeing the outside. So that was the biggest thing. But, uh, it's not, it, it, doesn't, it hasn't gotten better since I've been there. It just continues to. Uh, I don't want to say the words, but. Uh, <laughs> My, my desire to stay is uh, less and less every day. Oh. Well, I'm at like a breaking point now, because I'm at 12 years, and they wanted to cross the We're at a coasting point. Yeah. Yeah, coasting point, is that what they call it? It's their retirement. Oh. So if you get 30 years, you're fully vested, which means they can retire at 55. We'll pay the Social Security and plan to railroad retirement. Really? So uh, if I stay any longer, I'll never be able to leave. Kind of thing. Right. But if I stay any longer, I might not maintain my sanity. Um, I know. <laughs> I I wish I had answers, my friend. I don't. I, you know, I, I I absolutely love my work. I love it. But you know, I, I'm at the same point where it's like, man, I gotta have a life. You know, it's not just the work. It, there has to be something else. So that's a tough one. That's a pickle. Good good luck. <laughs> I got nothing. <laughs> If you figure it out, let me know. Yeah, no, I figured it out already. You quitting? No, if I figure it out, I'll write a book. Oh, 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 okay. Gotcha. Thinking about actually applying for a new job in the company for the first time in forever. The last job I got, the job I didn't know, I didn't even apply for it. I got a phone call. Your old job doesn't exist. You've got a reorganization. You've got a new fucking job. I'm going to say your new job is. Because that's the world right now. <laughs> so, what's the culture of working in the rail industry? It's a lot like the military. Really? Yeah. Okay. I actually hire a lot of military people for that reason. Okay. My title is General Construction Supervisor. That's a bitchin' title. Signal Engineering Construction. And it's not general as in I do everything and I'm junior. It's general as in I'm fucking general. I'm the goddamn boss of yeah, this thing. <laughs> There's yeah. other obviously yeah. people above me making much higher decisions. Yeah. Inspiring new troops. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so when you say you're out in the field, you actually have to go and in, in, in BFE and, and, and be out wherever and deal um, with a thing out there. No, so I do the pre-job surveys. Okay. Like all the stuff before the union comes show up to do the building. Oh, okay. So then once they're there, like when my guys are up now doing the building, I have to go make sure that we're going to come in on budget, that I can conquer whatever barriers they have for missing material, getting it, set the cutover rates, and then the cutover, which is when they put new systems and service on the side on. It's valid. Oh, yes. So you're developing new, new. You're not maintaining, you're not the troubleshooter. I've done that. Uh, I was a maintenance supervisor for a long time, but it's not what I'm doing now. I, I don't know if I want to do that. A call in the middle of the night. Holy fuck, a bad thing has happened. We need you right now. Yeah, I've been to, we call them 7.1s, which is someone got hit by a train, and now we have to make sure we're oh. good. I've been to probably 500. So. Oh my god. Ugh. Oh. You know, worse for the train crews that had to watch it, you know. <clears throat> Put the train into emergency, they say trains will stop, they stop it, they stop really quick. It's so, so right. someone's trying to kill themselves, you really can't stop it. Right. You just have to watch it. Is that the thing? That by yeah, suicide by train? Most of the incidents that I've been to are fatalities. No, I mean, the purposeful? They, they said, oh, yeah, excuse me, suicides. Oh, yes, yeah. yeah. Most of the incidents okay. I've gone to are suicides. Actually, the ones that are accidental, like the drunk people, they don't ever even fucking almost get hurt. <laughs> they fucking turn, oh, I'm on the road, they'll turn down, I'll drive on the tracks for a quarter of a mile and get hit by a train. 
the car spot be destroyed. Uh, we've got a clone from the vehicle. There's no seat belt there completely. We've got a fucking bruise on her arm. Oh my god.